Hi guys, and welcome to a brand new episode of Off Air with Women and Tools. Uh, very, very sorry, very sorry that this is coming to you a day late. I know we normally deliver on Thursdays, but you know, um, yeah, some something happened. I was about to swear, but you guys said I swear too much, so you know, I'm trying to control that. Curse, swear, <laughs> no. do it. No, no. Some there was a message that I saw that somebody was like, "Oh, um, I watch it. I watch this with my kids and Tools." And I was wondering much. why you're watching it with your kids, Aunt, as in Madame. And you make them. No. And see if you this is for people, I think you have to be at least 16 to 18. Yeah, 18. Yeah, 18. 18 yeah, 18. All right, so watch this with your kids. What's this? Sesame Street? <laughs> welcome and happy coronavirus. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, everybody is dealing with this. And oh my gosh, you know what I saw the other day? What I saw a clip of what's her name again? Oh god, the girl from is it the talk or the view or something? Oh, Adrian from Adrian. the real. And she said, she said that when she's in her house, if she goes to the toilet, she doesn't wash her hands. And I'm just like, for all the people that have eaten at Adrian's house, you need to sue her. That's nasty. I don't care because she kind of feels like these are, this is her house. So, so these are her, I wash I my hands know. in my house. In fact, if I use the bathroom in my house, I'm over here cleaning the seats. That's, that is my own bath, but I'm cleaning the seats and everything. That like, was just come on. nasty. So I was, I was in, I was in London for a bit. And um, so f- this is what's happening in London. First of all, they're panic buying. <coughs> They're panic buying. Um, t- toilet roll is done. Hand sanitizer you cannot find anywhere, mm. and also hand soap. And I'm just thinking, is it that people weren't washing their hands before? I'm wondering. Do you guys, do, do you, do you guys wash your hands? Of course we do. Accent guy, do you? Yes or no? Accent guy's refusing to. You talk. guys you have guys scarred him. him. Now he doesn't want to say a say word. Like, he's he literally doesn't want to say pim. He's holding his lips. But do you guys wash your hands every single time you go to the bathroom? Yes. What about when if what about when you go clubbing? When you used to go clubbing, when you turn up, do you when you get home do you wash your hands or when you take a shower? Exactly. Yeah. First thing I first thing I do, I wash my hands throughout the day. But as soon as I get home, first thing I do is I wash my hands. Mm-hmm. Like if you're if you're if you don't do that, you know what you should do? Just try it out for like a day or two. When you get home, first thing you should do before you touch anything, just wash your hands and you'll see how dirty the water is. You guys. Opening car doors, opening yeah. different doors. And a lot of times people get straight into their house probably because you're hungry and they go straight to the fridge. You've just carried all the germs and touched your fridge and taken it into your fridge. You just wash your hands wash first. Wash your hands. It's not going to take you 30 seconds. Just wash your hands. Sing the happy birthday song twice. Happy birthday to... Oh, okay. Yeah, make sure you I mean, wash front and back. Front within, and back. Within, you know, inside, you're under your fingernails, everything. Wash your hands properly. Yeah. And then yeah. the people that think, well, if I did a number one, I don't need to wash wash my hands. Or there are some women that feel that, well, I'm not really making contact with my private area because I'm using tissue to wipe up and everything. First Sorry, of all, why are you graphic, using that's tissue to wipe up? Like, what happened to? Okay, let's say you are even you're, you're outside. You should have like baby wipes or wipes. Sometimes or something. you don't always got wipes. But I just feel that because. Yes, you might not make contact with your private area, but you're opening the door, the cubicle of the bath of the of the toilet. Touching you're going to touch one or two things, so just just wash your hands. That's mm-hmm. just nasty. So mm-hmm. the fact that you know hand sanitizer, hand wash, and everything is selling out, I'm just like you people are dirty. You guys aren't washing your hands, and don't eat at, at Adrian. What's her name? Balen. Yeah, don't eat ballon, actually, ballon, whatever. Adrian, ballon, ballon, go and wash your hands. <laughs> Adrian, go and wash your hands. Ballon. But there's so many Adrians, trust and believe. So, please, you just need to be extra careful. In fact, when I wash my hands now, I wash from like the elbows. Are you doing surgery? Because <laughs> I do this a lot, I do this a lot. Like, I work at desks that other people use. I mean, ah. I was um, when I was away. I got on a train. Um, I, I try not to get on trains because I'm just like really. I get claustrophobic. And this guy literally just coughed. Hey! He did not. Thankfully, he was like almost in the next carriage. But I was so disgusted. I was just like, what the hell? You know the kind of cough, sneeze where you can see projectile stuff. And this guy didn't cover his face. And I was just thinking, this is why I don't get on trains. You Nastiness. should actually self quarantine yourself for fourteen I'm bad. days. <laughs> They checked my temperature at the airport, I was fine. A uh, big shout out to when I was when I was going into the UK, there was no nobody asked any questions. Nobody asked me where I'd been to. So I could have been coming from anywhere. Mm. Uh, they didn't ask any questions. But coming back into Nigeria, they had um 
uh, they, they were checking for temperatures. You had to fill out this health form. And then there were just random people standing around saying, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. I was like, yes, yes, yes. You know. <laughs> yeah, so I have to say, big shout out to, you know, the officials at uh, Moritella Mohammed for, you know, doing something about it as opposed to just saying, well, you know. Mm. But I'm, it's, it's just interesting how badly Italy has been hit. Yes, um, I was looking at this map and l- listen africa is the place to be right now yes man okay so all my cousins come on down yeah you know but there's this theory um, we stay we're gonna though, see <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna see if, if this is proven right or wrong but there's this theory i don't know one black person that's died from coronavirus well, I, but I think they don't want to see it because even the guy maybe who it's died, a melanin the guy who died in egypt apparently was french or german it was german guy so it's like so we are cool like dudu you know the 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 virus is like uh, maybe the, the virus is racist. Very good. That's a very good. That's. I'm, I'm just joking, that. please. I'm fine with that. <laughs> but it's interesting. So I have I have a friend. Um, bless her. She's she likes her conspiracy theories. So she reckons that um, because of what's happened mm-hmm. and because and it seems to be really really tensioning the foreign press mm-hmm. that Africans are not getting this. Disease. Which I, I find like, it very racist. They, they're not reporting it well enough. Blah blah blah. So she has a theory, and her theory is that um, these scientists are going to start coming for you know um, black Africans, basically trying to investigate like our bodies to understand why the corona virus hasn't hit, hit us harder so you know but they're already offering money i think yeah 3500 yeah 3500 pounds if you know you know you need some money that might i think be you should you. make it like ten thousand. maybe but you guys what's going on first is coronavirus then they say we're going to have 200 plus days of rainfall in nigeria then you have the what? stock market doing one or one then you know oil prices are down is the world coming to an end gang gang no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. All these things happening this week. You know I'm what you like, need to do? What? I have to give your life to Christ. Somebody, no, somebody said, oh, go and change all your money to dollars. I said, which money? <laughs> Where's the money? Is that, hey, is that even the best thing to do? That's change what they said, the change because, oh, because the, the, the value of the Naira is going down, so it's better for it to be in a foreign currency that is stronger. So I'm just like, Whoa. last time I did that, I spent all the money, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's going to be a fantastic episode. Make sure you watch. Um, hopefully, this is a very, very educational episode. Yes. Um, if you have any questions, feel free. We know we've been a bit rubbish with our fan mail. Next time, we're going to sort that out. So feel free. Keep sending the ma- mails. Keep sending the questions. And honestly, let me just do this part, part this PSA. So you guys have been quite hard on Hassan guy, accent guy Aziz, and it's very important that we talk about this because we in this country we have different opinions. Mm-hmm. So we might consider some opinions wrong, but I feel that it's very very important for everybody to be able to air their opinion. Yes, because sometimes when you have these conversations that don't turn into like you know bullying, when you have proper conversations, you can actually end up educating somebody. So. Yeah. We bullied him a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he's a nice guy. He just yeah, has some funny yes, ideas. So, nice oral, oral ideas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now he's holding his lips. Doesn't now he doesn't say want to But actually, I think it's very important <laughs> to to have different opinions, you know, be aired. So we might not agree with them, but I think it's very important. Absolutely. To, you know, I don't think it would be great if me and Gemi were here just agreeing on everything. So, you know. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, lay off him. You see a crying man. <laughs> he's not crying. <laughs> but he doesn't want to say anything. Doesn't want to, he's like, locked his lips. All right, so stick around. It's going to be a great show. And we've got a lovely guest. Okay, so a lot of you guys have asked us to uh, talk about the topic of sexuality, which I think is a very, very valid uh, conversation to have in this country. Mm -hmm. So we had, we looked and we looked hard and it took a while, but we actually do finally have somebody um, that is willing to talk about his experience as a gay person in Nigeria. We've got lovely Walter here. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for actually coming on our show because um, obviously everybody knows about the prejudice that still exists in this country and I'm sure it wasn't an easy decision but thank you so much we appreciate it and we hope that we can um, educate people. All right so I have tons of questions. Same. <laughs> tons and tons and tons of questions. Same. So I want to know this um, did you have you come out to your family or um, has that conversation not happened yet? Oh no I have. I it's with my I came out on stage it's, it's usually how it happens with most people um, first was with my brothers although they didn't they got to know it wasn't like I hey guys I'm gay you know they 
found out on them by themselves. My brother, um, one of my brothers, um, saw something he wasn't supposed to see on my phone. Oh, I see. The other one just guessed, you know. But with my parents, I told them, or rather, my mom asked. She'd been suspecting some things, and then she asked one day, and that was last year actually. And um, and then I said, yes, yes, this is who I am. So and she told my dad. And um, it, actually, before then, I had always thought my mom would be, because growing up, you know, she was one I was very close to. And I had always thought that she would be my close ally. ally yeah. And then my dad would be the one who would keep me out of the house or something. <laughs> it didn't work out like that, really. My dad was very mature about it. And mm. my mom is the one who's still struggling with it, so... Okay. Yeah. What was the reaction? Was it like dramatic? Oh, oh my god. Yes, it really was. She you know cried. Oh my goodness, what what are you saying? You know, my pastor said this and my pastor said that and I'm thinking, okay. So and it was a lot of, you know, back and forth. We had a lot of fights and um especially when I think it said dawning on her that okay, so this means you're not going to get married and i was like yes that's what it means and she was to like to a woman yeah well gonna say. yeah <laughs> so um she um so you know i i, I suppose um she has uh, well my mother comes from a, a religious background so there's all these um things she has to deal with to reconcile with the fact that this is what is happening and it's taking her time. I suppose she'll get there sometime. I mean, whenever I get frustrated about it, people tell me, well, think about how long it took you to... To come out. To No, not really to come out, to get accept yourself. So maybe just give her that same consideration. So, Do, do you think that she was more... Um, I mean, do you think your family were more concerned about what other people would think? Oh, yeah. Than... That's, you know, just accepting you. I, f- I find that a lot of people here, it's more a case of, oh, what people say, what people think. That's, and, that is usually the case. I and mean, it's, 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 it's come up a lot, you know, when I, there are times when, like last year when I went home, I visited my parents. Um, the, there was these um, family friends who visited okay. the house and I wasn't, I was inside sleeping. Mm-hmm. And then when they left i had come out and my dad was like oh so you know sister and sister woman they they came around and so they were asking oh, yeah how old is your son again ah your first son what's happening why is he not getting married and he did according to him he said he didn't know what to say oh you're and the I'm first like, son yes I am. oh wow. wow that was there i'm sure there was additional pressure <laughs> as well yes. um and you know so and say so he said he didn't know what to say and i'm like okay couldn't you just have said he will be ready whenever he's ready he would get married and we're like he said yeah but still he didn't know what to say and i'm like okay you know what what will happen is next time somebody Ask you. asks you about me mm-hmm. refer them to me and then i'll answer them and then he's like yeah no he's not going to do <laughs> <laughs> so, because um we have he has gotten the message that i this is something i'm very very um passionate about it's not it, because the journey to where I am now, it took a while. Yeah. And you, when you get here, you, you don't want to be pushed back. You don't want to be shoved back anywhere mm-hmm. into the closet. So mm-hmm. um, he has accepted that, I think. Okay. I was um, going to ask you, like, how did you even discover or realize mm-hmm. that you were gay? <laughs> it's, um, like was it a gradual process was it something or? that you knew when you were a child or no actually no i i um it's i found out when i was in in boarding school okay and um i had this i think i've told this story so many times like i had this guy who was in my class and mm-hmm. from genesis one two three he was you know he was always bullying me and even though I was a class captain when I was in SS2, I didn't seem to have any power over him. And then we entered Genesis 3 and it turned out why he was so antagonistic towards me was, I suppose, he liked me. Because while we were, after one class, he just came up to me and kissed me. And 
And um, I wasn't... That was my first sexual experience. And I wasn't um, repulsed by it. Even though, in of course, in these things you know, he says there's something different about you because you are not feeling the same things that other boys your age are feeling. And you're not reacting to some of the things on TV that they are supposed to react. You're supposed to react to which they are reacting to. You're not having the same conversations about girls like they are. Mm -hmm. And so, but you don't know what it is because, well, at that age, you don't even know there's a word. You don't even know yourself, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sexuality. So, you just, you just, you, well, you figure maybe it will get to some, at some point, you'll start feeling these things. Maybe you're just a slow, you're slow at developing. But then when that happened in Genesis 3, I, it felt just like, okay, well, this is, this is it. Like, this is what I didn't know um, I didn't understand, but now it suddenly makes sense. Okay. Um, it, although I, I still didn't know the words for it, and but I knew I enjoyed it, and I knew I wanted more of this. And so when, as as um, the years were going on in, in school, and all these other boys were experimenting with girls, I just didn't feel that way. I wanted to experiment with boys and. Okay, so let's talk about being gay in Nigeria. Um, I saw I saw a story um, a few days ago, a very very scary story about um, a man that was uh, using you know social media to basically pick up you know um, well, was contacting gay gay men and um, would proposition them, and then when they would you know plan to meet, when they would meet, he would then rob them, and I think he ended up they caught him because he ended up killing somebody. So that yeah. is something that we, I think it's it's kind of common, isn't it? It really, really is. It's um, it's so common. It has a name for it, for it in, in in my community. It's um, it's called Kito, where um, someone, and it became even more prevalent with the passing of this um, SNCPA law, the anti-gay law. That law sort of like um legitimized it yeah made it okay for them to it, it was something that used to be done way back mm. before 2014 and after that it was just like you know what gay people are up for grabs just do your thing with them and no one questioning it so bad that even it's not just these human beings that are in all these places it's the police is everyone like we have situations where um the police would catch someone, maybe maybe they stopped him on the road and they went through his phone and they checked and found some things and then they'd be like, okay, yes, so you, you are this. And then they would um, ask him to name other people oh. and then they would call those people or rather they would use his phone to call those oh, people those to people. be like, um, come out to so and so place and meet me. And these people would the police would use, a, use this person to set up like a sting. Exactly. And then they would come and, you know, arrest people and get get them. So it's it's gotten so bad that, you know, you, there are there are all these um underground LGBT um like networks that are always like, you know what, these are these are the things you should look out for, these are the people who you should look out for. Um, and then you have people who, when they go through these things, they have pictures and they report and be like, okay, so and so person set me up and it's happening in so and so place. And then they spread the pictures around so that people know to stay away from such yeah. people. Because there isn't any um, police you have to, you can yeah. report to. That was going to be my question. So yeah. if somebody has been set up where, you know, they've, they've been contacted, maybe they meet up with somebody that they also think is gay, and then it turns out to be um, a horrible, horrific experience. Are you saying that they can't? They can't go to the police. They no, can't. No, no. It's you really, really can't. It's it's all about okay. You know what? So this has happened to me. I'm just going to have to deal with it somehow. But then I will derive some sort of satisfaction in knowing that through me, someone else wouldn't have yeah. to go through this. I I remember, in fact, um, a guy who um, went through something like this. And he had to lie to his family that he was attacked by robbers. Oh wow. And wow. and so the family 
you know, being very conscientious and all that, but like, oh no, you have to report to the police and it's like, it's fine, I don't have to. But like, no, 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 I mean, this is something serious, you have to report to the police. And so he calls me and he's panicking and like, what do he, what, what should he do? He can't go to the police because mm. then there will, there are all these statements and yep. it, it might come out. And so, um, when I had to, okay, and I had to start calling people who call people who wanted to know if there is anybody who is in the force, who is queer, who we can talk to and be like, okay, so what do we do in situations like this? And it was Did all you just find so, somebody? Uh, yeah, we eventually found one, oh, someone okay. who advised us on what to do. Um, but yeah, that is that is the situation because um, usually the police, once they, they always seem distracted by the fact that you're gay, the moment that comes out, every other thing becomes... They you look know, at you differently. Exactly. And mm. you suddenly, you that was the victim somehow becomes the villain. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can, I can understand that. Has, have, you, have you ever been set up yourself? No. Luckily. Okay. I, I mean, I was. Um, yeah, I grew up nowhere. And that was where it happened. It was, um, I was out with, I went out, I, I was dating this guy at the time. We were in university then. And um, we went out to his friend's place, and there were all these guys there. And then <laughs> there was this someone who was eyeballing me all throughout. And I, you know, I, I mean, I was flattered by it. And, and I, I'm, I have this guy I'm dating, but I was interested in him, and I was mm. like, okay, so what do I do? Um, I can't tell this guy that this someone else is eyeballing mm, me. Checking you out. Mm-hmm. Exactly, something like that. So. At some point in the in the day, he connected with me, gave me his number, and was like, "We should see." And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, sure." And and so then we were communicating, and then I he we set up a date when I would come to back to that house because yeah, that was his place. Mm-hmm. That was like a boys' quarter behind the, the main house. And so I get there, I was like I think 17 or 18, and I get there and um so we started making out, and then. It's. I realized he was. He wanted me to get naked while he wasn't, mm. and I was naive and I didn't know these things, you know. So, so but then, it was when I was when he had sufficiently got me naked and was still on his boxers and stuff that um, suddenly someone just badges in and starts shouting, "Oh my god! Oh my, oh my god! This is what people are doing!" And I was terrified. I thought this other guy was terrified along with me and he was slapping us around. But then, you know, in the terror and everything, you know, he, I still realizing some things. One, I seemed to be the only one who was, was getting, it. Was getting a it. lot <laughs> more. And and um, and then he wasn't, because he was threatening all this, says, he's going to expose us, he's going to take us to the police. And I'm like, okay, but he didn't appear to be shouting so loudly. Like, it was... His voice was very controlled. Yeah. And it seemed everything just seemed so weird. <laughs> like I was terrified, yes, but it, as the terror was wearing off, I was realizing all these little things that didn't seem to fit. Yeah. And so I tried something where I started shouting, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay, what do you want? And then you're like, keep down your voice. I'm like, oh, so that's it. Um <laughs> you yeah. guys won't set up, but you you just want it to not get, you know, yeah. out there that this is what is going on. So well, I was still, these were older guys, and eventually they still took my phone and took some money from me, and then course, yeah. you know, they kicked me out, and, and then I went home and had to lie to my dad, oh, and they stole my phone and all that stuff. Do you feel safe as a gay person in Nigeria? No. No. So I, how do you date? How do you socialize? How do you even move around your business? Just It's, um... Dating, <laughs> yeah, that's it's a very hard one because these guys are everywhere. They've infiltrated all the dating apps, so they're everywhere looking for how to get at gay people. Um, so essentially, it's mostly who you know. Mm-hmm. So you know someone who knows someone. Can you hook me up? You know that kind of thing. If that usually works the best. Um, getting around, we try to. I mean, I, I, I try to um, not let the fear. I mean, I've gotten 
there's a there's a way there's um, a point you get to when you're so out mm -hmm. that you try not to let yourself be bothered by okay so what may happen like you wake up in the morning and of all the things that lagos has to you have to deal with in lagos city you just don't want that to be one of them mm -hmm. even though the threat is real mm -hmm. very um, real you know that um something like that getting out can ruin you but you try not to i mean it's the kind of reality that is so present you go crazy thinking about it so mm -hmm. why not just keep it somewhere where you don't have to think about it and just go about your life it's... have you ever dated someone who is not out oh yeah um most most of the guys i've dated i'm not out well except one but yeah i have i have it's and it's rough because you have to because this um this, people's sexual sexual orientation is a journey and different people are at different places in their time mm -hmm. in, in their life so there's always a, someone you you'd meet who you're probably closer to being out than he is mm -hmm. and then you have to start okay so when you want to say something on facebook or you want to talk to friends or you want to hang out you have to consider how that exposes him of course know, and it's very it's always very rough um in situations like that when you have to think about yourself and the person you're dating yeah. when you do things yeah. so i i believe that even though there is the um you know anti-gay law and everything i believe that throughout nigeria we actually have you know quite a few like thriving gay communities yes especially in lagos oh yeah um it's i mean we have to exist it's mm -hmm. we have to be we have to live and and it's always best when we have um when we exist in our communities and when it is you know there's this um there's this separateness um gay people usually have from the general public that can drive you insane and so you need to have a network of people you can mm -hmm. hang out with that whose presence makes you realize okay you're not so alone so it exists online and it exists in in real life and we have all these even though this i mean there used to be all these house parties and and, and i was gonna ask about yeah. that i heard um, somebody told me yeah somebody <laughs> told me that um he went to this party like he's apparently these parties are you know held all throughout lagos and um so you get to the party you drop your phone and anything happens it's yeah so yeah that happens um so yeah that have you, you been know, to a few of those parties <laughs> of course, yes, yes. Of course. <laughs> why do you because it's it, i was having a conversation with somebody um somebody at the office this was a few weeks ago and we we're talking about you know um you know gay people and we talked about a certain person and he was like oh that's a that, he's a great guy this and that and i'm like yeah but he's gay and he's like oh my gosh and i was like so what changed so I was, I was like, you you went from looking at his character to thinking about him having sex, basically. And I was like, can you not just realize that he is still that person that you got along with, the person that you think has got great character and everything. So why does it, and his whole reaction was just, it was just interesting. It was very interesting to me because I was like, but why do you feel so threatened? Because it doesn't mean he's going to jump on you. <laughs> so why do you think? Um, I, I believe, I believe being gay, um it's it's sort of like um it's a reversal of everything that is normal that people believe to be the way things should be okay and especially and, and especially when, when it and and that is why the um the obsession with sex is especially more concentrated on men I, was, I just think we have. I, was, I think we I have too many curves in this country. So I was going to ask, but I feel like gay women or bisexual women in this country don't get this. Yeah, it, it, they. Yeah, it's. Um, it's not as severe. It's as severe they, because because there is. Um, but but I I do sorry to go, but I do I do feel that when it comes to you know gay women and um you know bisexual women, obviously we know that this is a patriarchal society, and I feel that a lot of men still look at gay women and bisexual women as in as oh I can be a part of that. Or oh, like can, a fetish. You know, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a fetish for you. Yeah, yes. The, 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 accent accent guys, be quiet. You guys are shamed him into silence, but. 
yes he's nodding so it's 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 like a fetish for you guys dial right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Go on. The, the, um, I, I suppose the um, the discrimination um, it varies. It's with it's more violent with men. Um, with women, it's usually um, about it's mostly about not taking it seriously enough mm-hmm. or uh, dismissing it as something that is not valid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like if it's yeah, yeah. But, you know. Yeah. So, um, and <laughs> there is this whole. Um, because I just I want to talk a little bit about the sex sure. and when I, I believe I think that with women there's already um, when you picture the when you picture the sex that lesbians have well it's there's a vagina so everything is, is still just there the way it's supposed to be mm-hmm. it's just that it's with a different partner mm-hmm. than what we are used to but when with the men it's not the 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 whole way it's going into it's not where it's supposed to be. I mean, you see that's sorry that, <laughs> you said that was weird. <laughs> that, that is um the that's supposed to be coming out makes people, people yeah so yeah. It, it, what it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. But then you you keep asking but how is that's not yours. It's the people who are experiencing it are not complaining. So mm. why is that your why business? And you know, I guess people just don't um, can reconcile to the fact that yeah. this is what is happening. Mm. To and especially, it's also about the masculinity thing that um, you. That's why there, 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 there's always this hate against effeminate men and yeah. everything that subverts masculinity. Toxic masculinity. It it, We're going to talk it, about that. Makes soon. it feel like well, Less it shouldn't exist. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have. So, do you believe that there are um, in Nigeria there are a lot of cl- closeted gay people? Do you believe that, as in, a lot of gay people that are pretending that living double lives, basically? Yes, but but yeah, I mean that's that's. Um, I mean that's all over the world, really. It's it is, but uh, in Nigeria, it's it's um it's it's certainly a given that this yeah. is that this is a reality that not a lot of people are going to be out yeah. um, because it's not just the church it's not just the culture it's a family and it's expectations what they say family. what they say all these things yeah. are you know so um like somebody asked that even if they um they were to repeal the anti gay law tomorrow he doesn't believe that people would even come out of the closets because yeah. there would still be those it's pressures. See, yes. I, I yeah. think um, the people for the, the men in particular who are actively seeking out, you know, gay men to target, I think they are actually dealing with, you know, issues yeah, with their sexuality issues. because yeah. it doesn't make sense for you to, I feel that if you look at somebody and you hate them so much, there has to be something there has to be something else there there has to be like the person that bullied you um if you one of my favorite shows on netflix it, is sex education and mm. that's pretty much what happened this guy was getting bullied by the the is it the head teacher's son mm-hmm. was getting bullied all the time and eventually he found out that you know he was gay the head teacher's son so i think those people need to have conversations themselves um one of the things that i'm i'm quite curious about is and i and i've heard this happens quite a lot uh where you have um a, a man that's gay and he's not in any way, any form, ready to come out. And then you actually find out that he then gets married to a woman. So he and the certain download. yeah, so certain in certain situations, the woman knows he's gay. But in a lot of situations, the woman mm-hmm. doesn't know he's gay. Yeah. So what do you think about people that do that? Where like um, I think is is it Philip Schofield, a presenter in in the UK? He was married for goodness me a few decades, and he recently just yeah, yeah he recently out. just came out yeah. um, to the world and said he's gay. He's he was married with two kids, and he actually said that when he was getting married, he knew he was gay. So what do you think about? <laughs> it's um it's a very contentious topic even in my community. I'm because, just curious. Yes. Um, there are all these sentiments about it. There's um, a lot of people who feel a lot of ways about it. There are people who insist that you have to be honest with your partner so they can make the decision about being with you. There are those who um, say, well, this is what the situation is. You know, I just believe, I understand because I have, I have friends who are on both sides. I have friends who are married and 
they're gay. But they're gay and they're on the down low. And they have those who are actually quite open with their partners. They were open with their partners. And the ladies were like, oh, you know what? Um, you know, the pressure is on me to also get married. So let's just do that. No problem. And then I have those who are actively seeking to have this marriage of convenience. I think this just recently started being a thing where gay men seek lesbians out so I that we that can well. get yeah. together and just so they can leave us alone they can stop stressing me by getting married exactly yeah so um i'm i i try to understand that these things um have that not everyone is strong enough you know and i understand that i i also understand that not everyone um can stay can say no or stand up to family and then there are, there are people who say, oh my God, my parents or my mom, in case of single parents, my mom has suffered and done all this for me and they expect me to get married, they expect me to have children. So there's this wealth of obligation that is weighing on their mind and it's something they have to do. Now, I can't expect that person to risk mm. not having that refuge. I mean, it's like, the, the, the question really is, when this is what they are when they are running into this place, into the marriage for refuge, how can you then tell them to tell the wife that they, will, they are actually gay? Of course, that refuge will be destroyed yeah. and they won't get what they want. I, I get I get the the dishonesty of it. I get yeah. how callous it can be. Do you think do you think it's fair to do that? In, in some conversations, no. I don't I don't think it's fair to do that. I, mm. I know um I know it's very heartbreaking for, for some you know, to know that there are women who are carrying, especially when in cases where the men are, you know, ter- like seriously very, very, um, they're, they're very into sleeping with boys around. And then you're like, okay, so what's, I mean, is, are you taking any precautions for, Ooh, to safeguard yes. the woman, your yes, wife yeah. and all that stuff? So it's, I mean, all these things are the mess that comes with the toxic environments that persecutes gay people because it's like well this is what this is um, a consequence of what is going on the more you persecute gay people the more they have to hide yeah. and this yeah. marriage closet all these things there are ways which in which they hide and mm. you can't really um I, like I, there was this um, a, a story of a woman who was so mad when she found out that her husband was gay and she was raving and mad. And I'm and this is I, I know her distantly. And this is a woman who I've run into uh, several times on social media, and she's only so full of poison when it comes to, you know, LGBT issues. And I'm like, but you, did you really expect that to not happen to you? To not have eventually find yourself married to a gay man mm. when this is what you this is the environment you're fostering it's just it's terrible but it's the reality of you know being mm. gay in Nigeria before we let you go um, if there are any parents watching or uh, people basically and they their child has come out to them or they suspect that their child is gay first okay they suspect that their child is gay what conversation should they have I know None. Yeah. When I, I find that um I, I, I have an instance of a friend who's um who came out to his parents and the mother told him, Oh, we've always known. Okay. okay. And that was the most incredible form of acceptance. The fact that you knew and you didn't treat him any differently. Mm-hmm. You just carried on being you just carried on being your child. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you suspect that your child is gay, I don't I don't think a parent should do anything. I, should, I think the parent should just keep on Wait. being with the child because mm-hmm. coming out, it can be stressed enough. Coming out is a personal thing. Okay. Yeah. You don't make someone come out. You don't force someone to come out. Mm-hmm. He has to be ready to do that. Okay. So the best thing you can do, it's not about having a conversation with him. It's about creating an environment to make the person know that if you do come out, we would accept you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. And um, for um, you know, young people that are that are watching, that are asking themselves similar questions that you asked yourself when you were younger, 
what advice would you give them? Maybe they they heard what you said earlier about um, going through that stage where boys are talking about girls and they weren't really interested, or you know maybe that girls were talking about boys and they weren't really interested. What should they do? It's um it's important. Um, I always stress this thing about um, having a support system, and that's usually having friends. It's important to to actively to see if you can be able to seek out whether online or in real life people who have the same priorities who have the same struggles as you do mm. because there is it can get really so lonely being yeah. gay so that when you um when you find someone who thinks the way you think and who has the same tr- struggles as you it makes the load lighter so um i can't i can speak to having a support system or having people who think like you do and who mm. live the lives you do so that you have someone you can talk to yeah and that is very important in a growing a growing person mm. who's gay to have someone to events and are you are you, are you okay with people i mean you don't have to say yes but if people have questions that they want to ask you or would you prefer that they direct the questions to us and then we no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> should direct it to you. I wouldn't. Okay, yeah, that's so. fine. So, if you have any questions, um, of course, we can keep you anonymous. Um, if you want to, just let us know. If you have any questions, we can direct it to him, and then you know, respond back to you with the answers. Um, so one of the one of the greatest compliments that um I've heard about our show is that it is in um it provides information and it also entertains. So that's what we're trying to do for this episode. If you do have, have any questions, feel free to you know send them in, and we'll do our very best to get you some answers thank you once again for coming on our show and all the best with everything thanks so thank you thank Be you safe. so for once we were actually good on the show what do you mean and people have been saying that i curse too much i did not swear once not once throughout this episode so um but thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe <laughs> to our channel um like if you like dislike the video that's because you're somehow but it's okay just uh, make sure you watch it and share it with your friends. Says, it's like this video. God, the dog will bite you. <laughs> dog will or bite was you. it? Or was, um, Latan said, if you dislike this video, <laughs> they remove your name from the book of life. Oh, stop <laughs> it. Dog will bite you. <laughs> um, but seriously, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time. Bye.